Hello and welcome YouTube. Welcome to 10E Productions with 10. I am 10, your host, obviously. So, the first thing you might notice is I have a new intro. The second thing you might notice is the uh, etch and sketch thing in the background is gone. And the third thing you might notice is I have a different mat now instead of the white board which is now my background I'm using one of my battle maps from uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, this one was small enough to fit on the table and it makes a nice little contrast that being said I also want to apologize for uploading a video so late in my schedule I know I said two to three days and I've been trying to keep to it but the video that I was going to upload somehow got erased when I was transferring the video over to my thumb drive so I can edit it. Yes, I got a new editing program too, which is why I have that new intro. Tell me what you think of it. Um, it's my first attempt at a generic intro. So, yeah. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this guy's name. It is Frederick. F-R-E-D-D-R-I-C-K. Not Frederick, F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K. Yeah. I didn't like that version. I like the one I came up with. He's my Korax. I used to use him as a representation for myself when I played um, Werewolf the Apocalypse. So that's where I get the name from, and that's why I've kept the name for him. Korax, by the way, is a were-raven. But that's not the point of the video. The video today, we're going to go look at a board game that my kids got for Three Kings Day. Um, El Dia de los Tres Reyes, or El Dia de los Reyes, or as some people know it, The Epiphany of Christ. Uh, January 6th, it is basically a mini Christmas. Um, it's when the Three Kings came to Puerto Rico on their magical horse. And they gave all the little kids goodies. Yes, it is a thing. Look it up. Um, my family and I celebrated it. We've celebrated it for years. I learned about it from my abuela. I learned about it from my abuelo. So I do it with my kids. They love it. Anyways, with the help of Frederick, we are going to look at the board game. Uh. Let me try to get that. It is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, Battle Royale. If you notice, um, it's got French on it. I believe that's French. I don't speak it. I can understand some of it, but I definitely want to say that's French. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I Like I said, I don't know. But if you notice, this game, it's got five iconic dragon figures included. It's got Toothless and Hiccup on the front. Um, you can see basically what the game contains. And in a second, I'll show you the spread of it. Alright, so... Basically, you got the instructions. I'll go over those with you in a second. Um, dice, battle cards, loot cards, dragon cards. Whoa, sorry, dragon cards. You got the board in its non setup form. You can see the five dragon tokens. Uh, you got the cardboard tokens, and those are boulder tokens. Um, Oh, sorry. The double sided. You got a lava side and a stone side. Um, Alright, I'm going to show you the setup in a second. If you notice, I have set up the board the way it's supposed to. Um, it's a three tier board set, it's supposed to represent a mountain. 
each of these um, boulders go on the blue circles here. There's actually 10 of them. Um, if you notice that there's four of these things in the corner, these are the starting spots. This is a two to four player game, even though there are five dragons. Um, the five dragons are as follows. You have Toothless, who is a strike class, striker class dragon. Uh, he's got a movement speed of four and a loot carry capacity of three. You have the Light Fury. She's also a striker class. Movement speed of 5, but a limit of 1. You have um, Meat Lug, who is Fish Legs um, Dragon. She is a Gronkle, which is a Boulder class. She's got a movement speed of 3 and a loot card limit of 5. She's actually my favorite to use because you can get the most cards to use against people. Um, you have the Zippleback known as Barf and Belch, which is the Twins Dragon, um, Rough Nut and Tough Nut. It is a mystery class. It's got a speed of 3 and a uh, loot limit of 4. And finally, the Deadly Natter Astrid's Dragon. Oh no! I did something wrong here. Hold on one second. I had the uh, the wrong tokens on them. Um, she's a tracker. She's a deadly natter. And she's also got a speed of three and a card limit of four. Um, so the movement is how many uh, spaces they can move total. Whereas the loot card limit is how many of these cards they can have. The loot cards are like traps and power-ups. For example, you can drop a rock if you roll a 10 or out of 20. I'll, I'll explain everything in a second. Um, basically, the whole point of the game is, you see that X there? To get these three tokens into the slots and you can't just put them willy-nilly there is an actual method all method to getting it and there is actually a method to this insanity um, so let me just uh, put my tablet down and lock it into a place Hopefully it doesn't glitch on me. There we go. Yay. Sorry about that. Um, do, do, do. I'm having some issues with my lighting. I don't know why. So here is the the um, rules. Those are in French. At least I still believe it's French. Do you, I don't know. And this is the English versions. Gather dragons, gather around and prepare for battles, ascend the mountain, collect loot, and use your unique attack powers. Stay on top for three. It's basically a combination of King of the Mountain and, um, oh, what is it called? Rocks, Paper, Scissors. Um, I'll show you that in one second. And then you throw in some dice and some traps. Um, it's not a bad game. It's kind of entertaining for the kids. Um, as you can see, the setup of the mountain, how it's supposed to look. Um, each player chooses one of the five Draconic. Corresponding character sheets and three dragon tokens. Each dragon comes with its own unique stats. Place the game board in the center of all players. Put the loot crates and all dice in reach of everybody. And then place boulder tokers on all designated spaces with blue rings on the game board. I did that already. The character cards has the name of the dragon, the class, the movement, and the max loot. That is, you cannot get any more. So if you draw two, you can only get one. 
if you have only one limit space left. Um, roll the d20. Whoever rolls the highest goes first. Um, and they get to choose where they place their dragon. The rest of the move moves clockwise. Move according to the movement stat indicated. For example, Meat Lug moves only three. You do not have to move the maximum. And you are allowed to move in any direction you choose. So you can keep going back and forth. It's a great way to collect loot. Watch out for boulders. Collect the loot on loot spaces and prepare for the battle of other dragons. Alrighty. Um, this part right here might confuse people. If you get to the top of the mountain and stay for run round after everyone has taken their turn and it's your turn again, deposit one of your dragon tokens into the mountain. For every round in which you manage to stay on top of the mountain, de deposit one more token into the mountain. If you, do defeat, blah, blah, blah. if you defeat someone who is currently atop the mountain and steal their spot, you may instantly deposit one dragon token. When you deposit all three, you win. You do not have to do it consecutively. Uh, the boulders, you cannot pass through them, but you can attempt to destroy them by rolling a 5 or higher on the d20. If you fail, your attempt is over. Um, you cannot break any more, but you can still move. Loots, if you land on the loot spot, draw a loot card. Each dragon has a maximum amount, and they give you extra advantages on the field. Roll the d20 to decide if you actually get to draw, play the card or not. Uh, you may use as many. Um, the arrows, by the way, are, as you can see, there, there, there. You can only move up the spots up to the maximum field where they have the arrows. So if there are no arrows, you cannot move up. I don't think that counts for the... Um, I might have to rotate this because... Eh, I'll fix it later. I think there's technically supposed to be an arrow on all four of these edges. Except for those two. Apparently two of them don't have. So you can't get up that way. Yay! No. I'll, I think the whole thing rotates so each dragon has an arrow pointed from the, the base. I just did this quick setup. Um, the battle system is pretty straightforward. I think you can see over here. You have one dragon here. If you move your dragon next to it, you can engage them in battle. That's where these cards came come in play. This remember how I said rocks paper scissors. Well, you get bite, bash, and fire. So bite is has advantage against fire attacks. Bash has against um, bite, and fire against bash. Each player picks one of them. That's why there's two sets, uh, and they play, display their card afterwards, and if you get the advantage, oh by the way, this is d20, and then we have a d12 and a d8, uh, the person who has advantage gets the d12, it's a 12 sided die, and the person who has a disadvantage gets the d8. It's the eight-sided die. Oh, this looks to be a... Con yeah. Ugh. Normally, the d8s uh, that I'm used to have all the evens on one side of the die and all the odds on the other. Um, in case you're wondering why this one's black, my kids had lost the d20 that came with the set. But lucky for them, I... I'm a gamer, and I happen to have tons of D20s to use. And their dad loves them, so I'm willing to part with one. Um, you basically roll to see the numbers, and the higher number wins. If you win, you get one of their loot cards if you can carry one. If You also get to replace them on the top, so... Uh, Say they're on top, if you win, you can replace them on top. 
and you get to put them on any one of those spots. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much it. And I'm looking at this now, and I just noticed that symbol there, so that's why I think that these are supposed to line up with the starting points. I wasn't paying attention to that point. Sumimasen. Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, like I said, it's a game to play with your kids. Um, it's not bad. It's about what? 15, 25 minutes. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can do it maybe extend it to half an hour if you really want to finagle some time with your kids. Um, they actually don't tell me the actual gameplay on this. Um, a lot of things actually have a little uh, uh, time frame of how long an actual um, session may take, but they actually don't have one on this. Interesting. So yeah, about 15 to 30 minutes. Let's go with that. Um, as for the actual figurines, they're not bad. I mean, they're well molded. They represent exactly the creature they're representing. And they're pretty solid. Um, the only issues I have are the Light Fury and the Night Fury Toothless. Their bases are really small, so what I might do is just glue an extra little um, base on these so that they can actually stand up. Because honestly, yes, they can stand up, but if you notice, she falls down easily, and same with him. Uh, they look to be of similar molds. It looks like they just used a toothless mold for them. Because, for both of them, because the uh, Light Fury is supposed to be rounder. And she's still got the Night Fury wing. So I guess they just did the same molt on both. Yeah, the tails are the same too. So she ha she normally has a rounder tail. Um, he's blockier than she is. The Zipple back... Looks pretty good, too. I actually... Yeah. It looks like he's trying to give you a hug. Give me a hug. Or he's, like, discoing. But, yeah, no, see? They have really good bases, too. So it's just the, uh, the Light and Night Furies that have the bad bases. Oh, no, I'm going to break your card. Um, and the Deadly Natter... Um, she looks really good. You can actually even see the de detail of her, uh, her, her little horns or thorns or whatever the heck those are. The spines, that's it. The spines that she shoots out and pins people with. It makes Astrid proud. But yeah, they're not bad looking. I mean, honestly, I would use these for Dungeons and Dragons if my kids wouldn't yell at me for stealing them. Um, but yeah, that's the game. Um, like I said, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and you can learn it five minutes. Read the instructions, try it out for yourself as you're reading the instructions. You know what? That's bothering me. I'm going to actually switch them. There we go. Apparently you can actually start from any angle. Yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, oh, well. Because I just realized that two of the sides don't have, no matter what. Uh, that's an odd setup. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. I solved it. I just wasn't rotating it enough. See? 
Um, <laughs> Mea culpa. Um, but yeah, this is the Battle Royale. Um, let's just look at the loot cards, because I wanted to show you all the different potential loots. And like I said, this is the dice you roll to see if the loot card activates. Uh, you get Gust, which pushes it back a player three spaces. You get Battle Roar, which... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sticking to all the cards. Battle Roar, which challenges any player to a battle, so you don't have to be adjacent to them. More Gusts. Mystic Wind, you can swap places with any player. Pale Wind, you can increase your speed by four spaces. And I believe... The last one is Boulder. You can drop a boulder on any adjacent space. It doesn't have to be one of the ones with mar uh, blue markings on it. So you can block off people from moving. But then again, they have like, what, 15 chances of actually succeeding. Yeah, those are the only ones. There's 30 cards. Um, I don't even know if they have the same... Yeah, DC, I mean, roll of 9, 9, 8, 8, 15, 10, uh, Tailwind is 5. So they all have the same roll that you have for each card, uh, for, well, for each type of card, and each co different card has a different difficulty. Um, it's not a bad concept either, and it makes it more challenging. But overall, my rating on the game is... It's playable. Um, it may not be the greatest game to play. It may not be the most challenging. But I'm pretty sure if you get it, your kids will enjoy it. You'll enjoy it playing with them because, well, if you're a good parent, you get to enjoy playing games with kids even if you don't like to. It's part of the rules. Read them. Um, <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Ugh. Hairball. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the new um, intro. Um, and I hope you like it enough to subscribe to my channel. Um, with that, I'll bid you all adios y hasta luego.